lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. It's been a busy week. Has been. This What I have discovered is that um, a holiday week just means I have one fewer day to get my work done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Um, holiday weeks normally create more work for me. So yeah, I, well, I used to have one of those jobs too. Yeah, um, it's kind of the way it is. You learn to learn to manage it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you? What's what's going on with you? What do you want to? I don't know. What do you want to start with here? I I don't have any preferences. And no notes, no <laughs> preparation, and no, all right. I'm just ready to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, so. Obviously, the big news is the Fauci FOIA email ah, yeah. stuff. I don't see I, any reason to talk about that because all that was revealed is what we've been talking about for more than a year. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I don't know if that's something you wanted to dive deep into. I've only read a little bit of them. Yeah, I, I haven't really gotten a chance to review it. But No, I mean, I have a little bit, though. And I mean, I've seen some reports and stuff. And mm-hmm. and basically, just like you said, I mean, we're, we've been proven right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we were using his own stuff. Yeah. You know, part of that time, like the whole mask thing. Um, yeah, he flip-flopped you know, on that openly. Well, even before that, the the last swine flu or something, he co-wrote a paper talking about how masks didn't do anything to prevent the spread. Um, uh, well, to prevent infection in healthy people. Yeah. Um, and that it was more likely to cause a uh, bacterial um, lung infection. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. I, I mean, he wrote a paper about that. And yeah. so, or co-wrote. Yeah. Anyway, so like he he knows that the the evidence. I mean, you have to think yeah. that he knew that the evidence was not on his side with this. Yeah. Um. I, I don't even know what I, uh, the guy's just. He's just a flip flopper. He goes where the wind blows. No, I no, mean, no. He, it's not just that. Like he's a snake. He's, well, he is. Yeah. No, I absolutely believe yeah. that. Um. What's funny is is he. You know, he's got a book supposed to be coming out. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw something that the today. I'm not well, sure. How could I possibly be surprised about that? <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to come out till the fall, but um, I had saw something. And I don't know if there's anything to it that some of the publishers may be pulling it. Yeah, that they they may not put this book out now. <laughs> oh, this guy's full of yeah stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> then, yeah, maybe so. we shouldn't publish this after all. All mm-hmm. it'll be is confirmation that he'd lied for a year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ah, so. well, I mean, yeah, I'm not surprised. The we've mm-hmm. talked about. Well, we played that clip a couple of weeks ago um, with the doctor uh, talking about the stakeholders in vaccines. Yeah. Um, and Fauci is one, and the yeah. National Institutes of Health is one. Yeah. And so there is an economic incentive for this quote unquote government agency and government um, representative to push a particular treatment over anything else. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And. Um, I, I actually talked with my doctor today and, uh, I was telling her and uh, well, we were talking about that, you know, the biggest, um, the biggest financial boom the, for, um, pharma companies is vaccines yeah. because they had, they put no risk into it and it can be done repeatedly. Yeah. And especially if you can get government on your side. Which they've had full force. this this go around. Yeah. Like couldn't have had more government on their side. Yeah. And the media and everybody else pushing it, like to make mm-hmm. people get it, like this is is unheard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to wonder about the reasons. Yeah. Um, well, if you have any any skepticism in you at all, anyway, you have to wonder well, about yeah. the reasons. And I find more and more that there are fewer and few people that that have that like good skepticism that doesn't just trust everything that the media puts out. <laughs> yeah, I was reading today. Um, uh, and it's in Attention Deficit Democracy. And dang it, who's the author? Is it Bovard? Is it Van Buren? Anyway, um, Attention Deficit Democracy, I recommend it. I can't think of yeah. the author's name right now, but... Is this a um, book or an article? This is a book. This is a book, okay. Yeah. Um, but he was saying, uh, you know, if, if through lies uh, some business were to kill a thousand people, you know, by lying about a product... Yeah. And pushing it on the public, and then it killed a thousand people. People, the public would be clamoring, like climbing over each other to try and and string them up for that. Yeah. 
So why is it that when a politician lies and kills thousand people, he's yeah. a he's a great leader, a strong leader? Why yeah. why is there this? Or, dichotomy or at there? worst, is there's a push for him to lose his job because that's the big thing with Fauci right now mm-hmm. is like everybody's like, oh well, he's got to be fired and he's got to go and blah blah blah. I'm sorry, for me, that's not enough. No, I agree. I mean, this is criminal as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. What he's done. Um, I just, I, I believe that. And yeah, but he'll never be held to account because no. he's a government. Employee. Worst case scenario, he loses his job. Yeah. Some underling might end up, you know, serving a little bit of time maybe yeah. somewhere along the way, but I doubt that too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you remember the, uh, the FBI guy, um, that, uh, actively, um, uh, added information to the, or no, removed information from that email to get the, uh, FISA warrant. Yeah. Um, to get into the Trump campaign, uh, who like actually removed information from the CIA that would have, have, um, obviously ended up in a rejection of the FISA warrant. It would have said that this guy's working for the U S not, you know, not a spy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he, I mean, he was held, he was guilty. They, I mean, they had a, a trial and he was found guilty. Yeah. But nothing happened to him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, right? <laughs> he got nothing out of it. So I, I just, I can't see, no. I can't imagine a scenario in the future where he really, I mean, although they're, they're throwing people under the bus over there. I mean, they're, they're throwing yeah. Cuomo under the bus. They're throwing Fauci under the bus. They're throwing yeah, Bill but, Gates under the bus. But even, like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are starting to pay the piper here and I'm mm-hmm. curious to see kind of how far this goes. I don't expect it to go very far. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing about Cuomo is it just means it's the end of their career. It doesn't mean anything else with all of these people though. They're not really going down with the exception of Fauci over the COVID stuff, it's all right. other things. Yeah. Let, like with Cuomo, it's, they're not saying anything about him killing all of those people in nursing homes. Mm-hmm. It's all about the, the allegations against him for sexual harassment and whatnot. Yeah. Which I'm no fan of either, but I mean, like to me, killing grandma is worse than if he, you know, smacked the <laughs> assistant or something, yeah, you know, smack the butt of an assistant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And actually most of that stuff was that he kept asking them out or, yeah. uh, t- you it, know, talking to them in a creepy way. But, yeah. I saw some interviews with the, with the victims and like I say, the stuff that they were saying was absolutely inappropriate and I don't condone, Yeah, but it was once it was just like you said, it's just kind of creepy. It wasn't yeah. like, it didn't really <laughs> rise to the level, at least what I thought, you know, yeah so. i mean it, yeah i if mean he, if somebody had done that to my daughter there'd be hell to pay but i mean <laughs> yeah. like yeah. That, but that's kind of the way i looked at it like i mean it wasn't like it, it, to me it didn't rise to criminality you yeah know? well if he was 30 years older they would have just said what a what a weird old man you know well, yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so uh poor guy's lonely <laughs> yeah yeah all right um i don't know i i i can't see anything coming out of this and fauci's yeah. the worst of uh, well I mean, I don't even know who to blame again about the um, the lack of uh, or the abolition, the suppression of early treatments. Yeah. The you know the ivermectin and and yeah. other things. If I'm allowed to say the well. I word and the <laughs> you know, HCQ. Yeah. Um, well, Fauci's definitely at least culpable to some of that. Yeah. And, well, you know. remember he was pushing remdesivir. Yeah. Um, which which was ended up being proven to do nothing. Right? Yeah, nothing at all. Yeah. 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 It is not a treatment yeah. for COVID. <laughs> they, the who withdrew it? Withdrew entirely. it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then there was the Lancet article on hydroxychloroquine. Um, that you know was it like supposed to be a meta study article about how it was useless, and it turned to be turned out to be fabricated. Yeah. Um, and, but it stood, I mean, it was enough to push it out of the market. Yeah. And again, I, I think all of this comes back around to money. I think yeah. that they're pushing the vaccines because the NIH has a stake in it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that it's a, it's a windfall for these pharma companies because the taxpayer pays for any damages. Um, yeah. the taxpayer paid for the research. I was fixing to say, um, yeah. I mean, so they put, no, I mean, they didn't put nothing into it, but they, you know, they put very little, there was very little input and they stand to make a whole lot of money yeah. and you say, oh, well, but it's free. No, the taxpayer's paying for that too. Oh, absolutely. They are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and then of course with the hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin versus remdesivir, I said at the time, um, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, these are cheap. Yeah. Cheap, cheap drugs. Yeah. Um, you know, 
pennies pennies a day for the treatment. Yeah. Uh, whereas remdesivir was something new, and it was three hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Um, for treatment, and that's the difference. That's why one was pushed over the other. It doesn't have anything to do with the efficacy of of any of those things. Yeah. So. Which is just a shame. I mean, that's just because the it, pe- the we're the ones who end up suffering here. The mm. people that get COVID are the people that get sick. Yeah. Well, I keep going back to kids. Yeah. I mean, you know, I have seen kids like be afraid of people without masks. Yeah. Um, and it just it just hurts me to think about the number of of young kids that it's been a year since they've seen anybody smile at them outside their home. Yeah. Maybe yeah. inside their home with some of these crazy <laughs> with some families. Pe- folks, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, hadn't seen anybody smile at them outside the home. And and that kind of that's a weird hiccup in your socialization. I, I think that they, I think yeah. that we're going to see some effects of this last year in kids in the future. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, we'll see, but yeah. I, I really it's, think. it's not going to be good either way. No. I mean, like I said, there's definitely. Yeah, I can't been... imagine this ends up being a positive yeah. impact for on society. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. But yeah, I at least at least you can you can those of you who have been listening for a while can mm. now trust that we're not foolish and we're <laughs> right. not just going against the system because we want to go against the system. Mm. Um, we're we're not just rebellious like. We yeah. read. <laughs> Absolutely. Like there's there is reason for us to support the things that we did and to, to call um call BS on the stuff that we called BS on that everybody yeah. thought we were crazy. I mean, you know, yeah. at least in the mainstream. A lot of people did, yeah. You know, yeah. and I and I argued with people on um Facebook and uh over the phone and text and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything else about and in person about all this stuff over and over and over again. And by and large, um this shows that that we were right. Yeah. Yeah. I need some new conspiracy theories. All of mine have came true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you can stick with the UFO thing. Hey, there you, you go. Keep with that. Um, <laughs> what I really wanted to talk about is that I, I got into an economic discussion with somebody and it ended up being kind of interesting, mostly because of how people have this block, um, when it reaches a certain level. So, yeah. I think it didn't start here, um, but um, we we started talking about Walmart. Yeah, like how terrible Walmart is because the Walton family is this incredibly wealthy family, and they could afford to pay their employees enough that they don't have to be getting food stamps and stuff. Yeah. Um, and while I understand the sentiment, no. um, the it's not well. To shortcut to the end, it's not Walmart's fault. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the argument that I made was if those people weren't working at Walmart for uh, such a small amount of money, where do you think that they would be? Yeah. Do you think that they would have a much better job if they weren't working at Walmart? That they would have a job that paid them better and gave them benefits? Because yeah. I would say that if they could get a job that paid them better and gave them benefits, they'd, probably they'd do, do it, it now. <laughs> yeah, they'd probably go there. Yeah. They wouldn't be working at Walmart. Yeah. Walmart employs an incredible number of completely unskilled people. Yeah. And, well, and the argument, um, I would the other thing I would say to that is not everybody that works at Walmart is making super low wages. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of people at Walmart making a decent wage. Yeah. It's just the lower end employees with no skill. Because mm-hmm. that's that's really what this boils down to. And a lot of people start in those low positions and then work their way into better positions where they can make a decent living. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things you can't just start people at the top though. Yeah. Which is when I hear these arguments, that's what I always think of. Well, Mm -hmm. you can't just start everybody at the top. Like, because then then where you you can't afford to do that. It just doesn't make logical sense. Well, it doesn't make any sense to pay somebody more than they produce. Than they're worth. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you need to not say it that way. That definitely (laughs) turns out. You can't pay people more than, they're worth you, you, well, this you're well, right well, but more than they're worth not, to the company yeah um, i mean but that's that doesn't that certainly doesn't turn people to your side uh, i i, I um, understand that the, but i mean and what you're really saying is that you can't afford to pay people more than the production that value that they provide absolutely um and uh and you know to your 
to the first part of your point there, um, one thing that you can say about Walmart is they promote from within. Yeah. Like if you go to Walmart and you show up on time and you work every day, mm-hmm. like you show up for your shifts, you show up on time, you work. You will move up. You will move up. Like, I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, it's political like any job. Well, yeah. But any job is that way. Like, I mean, there's going to be that that part of it. And, mm-hmm. and you'll work your way up and you can make a decent living. Mm-hmm. Even, but you you just can't, but you if you do away, if you raise those wages, you're going to do away with those positions Is at the end of the day is what happens. And that was the point that I was trying to make to her is that if you take Walmart away, they don't have a better job. They might have no job at all, which is definitely a worse position to be in. Yeah. Um, so they still don't have benefits, and now they've got no income either, although yeah. that's not true because the government picks well, up the, yeah. you know, some... But um, the government doesn't pay more than they make at Walmart. Well, they might right now, but... Yeah. Well, that's coming to an end, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope. Generally speaking, they don't pay... The government doesn't pay you more to sit at home than they pay you at Walmart. Yeah. Um, and uh, apparently there's enough of a difference between those things that people are still willing to go work for Walmart. Yeah. Well, or maybe absolutely. they just have some pride and want to make their own way. Who knows? Yeah. Um, at, at any rate, uh, the, you know, she said, well, and, and the other point that I kept making was um, these are entry level positions. This yeah. is not a position that you're supposed to be able to raise a family on. That's not the, that's not yeah. the kind of job this is. When you come in as a greeter at Walmart, yeah. that's not supposed to be a career. Yeah. Like that's well, <laughs> actually the greeter position at Walmart is more of a retired person's job, like <laughs> supplemental income, but they're like buggy pusher would be the example. Okay, I'd fine. <laughs> like you're not supposed to pr- produce for your family off of the buggy pusher job, but yeah. that, that position though can turn into, to more if you if you work it correctly yeah and it's that's a door for people who don't have any skill Mm -hmm. you know well and what she said back to me is that you know that may be it may be that those jobs are supposed to be for teenagers you know like their first job kind of thing but that's not the people that are filling those positions now it Mm -hmm. is people that are trying to raise a family that are filling those positions now and i said but that's not walmart's fault (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) Yeah. And and then she asked, like, well, what about, um, you know, we get uh, health insurance here. What about the benefits that we get here? Um, aren't you glad that we get benefits here? I said, of course I am. Yeah. W- would you work here if we didn't get benefits here? No, probably not. Yeah. Um, but I have skills and a degree and so forth that I can take to an experience that I can go take to another job. Yeah. Um, and find that job that will offer those things. Yeah. Which is the um, reason your job offers them because they wouldn't <laughs> have you otherwise. Right. Exactly. And it, and that and that's where we went from there. It's like these these things are supposed to be perks. These yeah. are things that that employers were adding to try and draw the best employees to their business yeah. or to, to retain people or you know things like that. Um, I am completely opposed to government mandating um, that that these. Uh, uh, that these employers provide those kind of benefits. Yeah. Um, and I also pointed out that there were thousands of stories, small business stories after Obamacare um, of people saying uh, there were some businesses that actually retracted that like, yeah, well, like, they took they some were of their jobs away sitting on that. Cause <clears throat> what happened is, cause I remember this pretty well, they were sitting in the position where they were just over the threshold of going to have to supply benefits that the business couldn't afford to supply. So instead of um, just staying where they were at, they, they went, let people go drop down. So they were under the requirements. Mm -hmm. So, and those people lost their job over Obamacare. (laughs) Yeah. And there were plenty again of, um, of businesses that were in a position that they could have expanded except for that they would have to provide benefits. And then they just didn't. Yeah. If you're talking about, 10, 20 jobs, thousands and, and thousands of times, that ends up being a lot of jobs. Yeah. And if you want wages to go up, what you need to do is create a situation where uh, employers are competing for employees and not the other way around. I'll tell you, man, this past decade has been horrible. Like the whole decade has been mm-hmm. horrible for small business yeah. between Obamacare and then this COVID deal. Mm-hmm. Like small business has taken a beating and it's really not good for the economy in general because what you end up with is these big corporations 
are just that's all that's almost all there is. Yeah. And that's not to say that small business can't come back because it absolutely can. I mean, we're I mean, we we have that drive in this country. Yeah. But it's going to take the government getting out of the way mm-hmm. of and letting these businesses grow and do what they need to do. Yeah. I mean, the the advantage that small business have is that they're smaller, faster, more maneuverable. They yeah. can adjust more quickly than the big businesses can with their giant bureaucracies. Absolutely. Um, but you've created a a, a cartelization um, of of business in this country generally. Yeah. Um, that you've driven out the little guys that are really, um, really, tr- uh, providing the competitive, um, side of the business against those big businesses. Yeah. Um, and you've created a, a whole bunch of, like a few big businesses instead of a whole bunch of small businesses, you've reduced competition. You've created a situation where the big businesses can kind of make deals with each other and not have to worry about it. Yeah. So much. I mean, they're like everybody tries to get their advantage. Yeah. That's that's how cartels that's how, work that's anyway. How business works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like even when you so throughout the history of this country, um, there has been attempts at uh, as at creating cartels in various industries, and it has never worked out in the long run. Yeah. So you may, in the short run, be able to make agreements with a few big businesses like yourself and push out a bunch of little guys. But as soon as you like loosen up, like, you know, by, uh, however you do it by increasing production to push prices down and drive out the, you know, however you yeah. happen to do it. Um, but at the point where you stop doing that, cause you still have to earn revenue yourself. Yeah. Um, then small business comes back. Yep. Um, these small competitors come back. you like, you can't maintain a stranglehold like that. And even if you could, you still have your your partners yeah. who also are want to make money as well. Yeah. Um, that's a, an issue that keeps coming up with OPEC. OPEC is probably the best known cartel, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and so they uh, will put these limits on production of the member countries so that they can drive oil prices up. But a lot of these countries are dependent on that oil revenue. Yeah. Uh, so when the price goes up to a certain point, some of these countries start either increasing production and or um, making deals on the side, yeah. uh, you know, saying, all right, well, we'll sell you that you just got to not tell anybody kind <laughs> right? of thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then it ends up opening back up again. Like yeah. they can't maintain that kind of, of yeah. cartel, at least not that kind of control. For long, yeah. 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 Um, so that's not really a concern. Like the, your concern about monopoly is when government supports it because that's the only way it lasts. Yeah, yeah. That's what I always tell people. The only way you have a monopoly is through government interference mm-hmm. uh, and running cover for them. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the only way. And so, um, the, you know, the thing that I was saying to her is that the ultimately the problem, and this is where people get stuck, like they don't want to make this leap. Well, it's the big business owners. It's all their fault. Well, no, okay. it's um, the, the problem is that you used to be able to, not that long ago, really, no. um, you know, 50-ish years ago, uh, you used to be able to support a fairly large family on a single income. Yeah. Well, and yeah, exactly. Because I mean, you think about 50 years ago, people were having more kids and mm-hmm. the man was the only one working. Yeah. I mean, generally, yeah. you know, I mean, that was the, that was the family structure. Mm-hmm. There's three or four kids. Mom stays at home. Man goes to work. Yeah. And they weren't all in poverty living that way. No, they were doing um, fine. Yeah. And uh, so, but what's the difference? And and what it comes around to is that um, that my favorite bumper sticker from LibertyStickers dot com, which is um, things don't cost more, money's just worth less because the government keeps counterfeiting. Yep. Yep. Um, and and that's really what the the center of this is is the the Federal Reserve and the control of the money supply, mostly the expansion of the money supply, mm-hmm. um, the expansion of credit. That's what creates all of these problems. And so uh, once they moved away from um, from specie, from gold and silver, like real commodities to back the currency, right. um, this started to slip away, and it happened really early. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a, a story that Rothbard tells in, um, what's the, what's the title of the book? Uh, you may say the fix was in or the fix was on or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's about like, it's in two parts really. It's not even that long. Um, but, uh, the first part is about central banking and the second part is about the federal reserve specifically, but he's talking about the, the, uh, creation of paper money, 
um, in the U.S. or in the West, really. Yeah. Uh, because it started here. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you know, very early on, people traded in, uh, like, the money was precious metal coins. Yeah. I mean, that's how people that's paid how. for things. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the British we were British colonies early on. The British tried to control this and make sure that you only used the, the British pound um, or British coins, but that Never didn't works, really yeah. work. I mean, the, you know, people traded with French coins and Spanish coins and, and so forth because it was all values value. Yeah. It was all gold and silver. So, yeah. yeah. So the, the early starts of debasing currency um, was when they started taking some of the the metal out of it and still trading it at the same value or, or using it to represent the same value. So now yeah. um, a pound of silver uh, actually had a little less than a pound of silver, but it, they but they still they called it, it a pound. A pound yeah. of silver, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and this was a problem. I mean, people you know recognize this and then you know you can weigh a coin yeah um that's easy enough you think about how we've done it even very recently here um in the early 80s they switched from a 96 percent copper penny to a four percent copper penny the copper sandwich uh, um well the copper sandwich is the quarter um, oh is it the quarter yeah uh, um, i mean i thought i mean they do that with the penny too i mean the penny's not 100 percent copper no no it's like four percent copper yeah, now yeah um it used to be 96 percent copper yeah um that's why the like a penny from 1970 something if you go to a trader is actually worth three cents because there's three cents worth of copper in it <laughs> hey, right. um but it still trades at a penny yeah. uh and that actually becomes important later on too um, as we get into this discussion but the the quarter is the copper sandwich okay. and so um the you know quarter before the mid 1960s was a silver coin. Yeah. Um, I've and, got a bunch of those. I like I collect those things. Yeah, and then it became a, a copper sandwich, yeah. uh, where they they put a silver plate on copper, and that's how it was traded. But it's still traded for twenty five cents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you see the results of that, right? So yeah. now all of this money is worth less because the the commodity that backed it, the the thing that actually had value in it. Doesn't have the same value. There's not as yeah. much of it. Yeah. So the coin itself doesn't have the same value. And so, um, anyway, Rothbard talks about uh, early on, um, while we were still British colonies, like 1690, somewhere in there, yeah. um, the the royal government of Massachusetts uh, used to send expeditions into Canada, um, presumably French Canada, yeah. uh, to raid and bring back loot. And that's part of how they funded their government and so <laughs> forth. So they do this every year yeah. um, and go get more money for the government. And then, you know, the, they would use that money to um, you know, pay off their debts. And, and, of course, they had to pay the soldiers that they sent up there to do it and, to, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So uh, somewhere along the way there, um, they sent soldiers up there to raid one year and it failed. They came back with nothing. Yeah. All right. So and, of course, government being government, they didn't have the money to cover it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, and so they couldn't pay the soldiers. And uh, I, I wish I could remember what Rothbard says. It's, it's something really funny about how, um, you know, uh, uh, when soldiers don't get paid, they get agitated. And you don't want a bunch of p agitated people with guns if you're the government and you owe the money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I can't remember Ooh. exactly what he says. It's <laughs> yeah. clever. Anyway, um, so what the government did was they said, all right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to create essentially a promissory note. We're mm. going to create 7,000 pounds of promissory notes to pay these soldiers. And in a couple of years, you can trade in these promissory notes for the, for the sol gold or silver, for the precious metal to back. So basically they invented bonds. Sort of. I mean, it's, that's actually what paper money is. That's what paper currency is. Now. Yeah. And, and they'd been using paper currency in the far East for longer, but yeah. um, I, I want to say that, uh, that this was the first time that it was used in the U S in the West or over this way. Yeah. 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 Um, and so the, the deal was we're going to print up these 7,000 promissory notes, these 7,000 pounds of paper currency, and we're going to pay you with that. And in a few years you can trade it in for the, for the precious metals. And this is all we'll ever print. Yeah. All right. So, um, how long Fast forward last? a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> no. Um, and they didn't trade out the the currency for uh, the actual 
commodity. Yeah. Um, and they were like, oh, well, this, this seemed to work out pretty well. People aren't really asking for the gold and silver. I mean, because honestly, it's convenient. Yeah, um, it's easy to trade. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a whole lot lighter than carrying around a bunch of silver or a bunch of gold. Yeah. Um, and so the government then printed another 400,000 pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, paid all their state debts and yeah. and so forth. Um, but the <laughs> the response is kind of what you would expect if you stop and think about it, which is that the, the merchants, mm. um, they didn't accept a pound as being worth a pound of silver. Yeah. Um, so they, they started, they were accepting it, but mm. they were accepting it essentially at a discount. Uh, right, um, yeah. and, uh, and so the government wasn't, wasn't real keen on that. Yeah. Um, and so of course being a government, um, they just mandated that they accepted it parity with uh, gold and silver. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, um, and you know, that was the, that was the beginning of the use of paper money here. And it works out great for governments. Oh yeah. Um, because you know, anytime they owe anything, they can just print more money. Um, and they can, they can force you to trade it. Yeah. Uh, they can print it and level. give it to you for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, and one of the, the points that's made in all this is that the bad money chases out good money. Yeah. Um, and we certainly see that now. Uh, even if you didn't have the government mandates that you use, um, oh, I, I, I think I was leaving something out. I'm pretty sure that also somewhere in there, like after the government said you have to accept it at parity, yeah. merchants started saying, well, we're not going to accept it at all. And then the government made it a rule that you had to accept it. Yeah. You have to accept it. You know? Yeah. And, um, and That's so something. you'll see it printed on your dollar now. This is yeah. a, a legal, legal US. tender for all debts or whatever, something yeah. like that. I've had people argue with me at the store before, um, like with a bunch of quart pennies or quarters or mm-hmm. like change, like you have to take this. This is legal tender, blah blah yeah. blah. You know, I mean, I guess, but yeah. like <laughs> sometimes that can be a, a interesting argument to have. <laughs> yeah. So, but you you start to wonder, like, why would bad money chase out the good money? Wouldn't people rather have the good money? Yeah. Well, of course they would, but yeah. they'd stop trading it. Yeah. Um, because the if they can trade a pa- a piece of paper for the same value that they can trade a dollar's worth of silver, yeah. then they'd rather keep the silver yeah. and trade the piece of paper that isn't actually worth a dollar in silver <laughs> to get their dollar's worth of goods. Absolutely. And so uh, so bad money just suppresses the use of good money because yeah. uh, people start saving they, the they good money. they hold the good money. Yeah, yeah, they hoard the good money, and then yeah. they use the bad money to, to buy things. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing the same thing. Like, I do. That's yeah, what I, I do. do. <laughs> I mean, I got tons of precious metals, and yeah. I'm not spending that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not till I have to. No. Nope. Um. Yeah, I'm in the same way. You know, I'm a gold buck, so. Yeah. Um. And uh. And and you know, then of course the the central banks, like the the story of the central banks, is that um. Is that well? They had to establish a central bank to to rein in the inflationary practices of the of the uh, private banks. Yeah. Um, but the truth of it is that the private banks were calling for the central bank because the central bank got to coordinate it and enforce the inflationary practices. Yeah. Um, whereas if you have a whole bunch of private banks, they can each only inflate their currency so much. Yeah. Um, because then otherwise. Uh, you know, another private bank comes in and under undercuts them essentially. Yeah. So there's competition that that um, the competition between private banks suppresses their ability to inflate the currency. Yeah. Um, but if you unify it all under a central bank yeah. uh, controlled by the government or not, doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, you you cartelize banking. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, and then they can say, oh, well, you know, well, we wouldn't want to do this, but the, the central bank said that, that we have to. And, yeah. you know, and then, of course, then they, they changed the rules about how much they had to keep in reserve. Um, and so that in, that inflates the, um, the credit yeah. because, you know, if you put $1,000 in the bank, they only have to maintain 10% of that in reserve. So they take your $1,000 and they lend out $10,000 off of that $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, that's crazy. Yeah. 
Um, and it gets out of control like this. And so it creates... And then we all go to the bank to get our money out at the same time. Yeah, well, and, and then the question becomes, <laughs> well, like, can they cover my uh, the balance that I have there? And the question uh, is, the answer is no. <laughs> no, well, I mean, individually they can, but if yeah. more than 10% of their people go well, after that money... Well, that's I'm talking about in a run situation. Yeah. yeah. Like, if we all decided... And, all, and the way people panic now, particularly, it wouldn't take mm -hmm. much, you yeah. know. Um, well, you have FDIC now, yeah, but all up it to does 250. is yeah, exactly. It only yeah. covers the quote unquote small balances. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, the the people that have a lot of money in the in the bank, uh, yeah. like huge investments in the bank, yeah. they just they're, lose. Yeah, they're losing all of that. Um, yeah. Of course, they probably won't lose in the end anyway, because they never do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, the the point is that all of this is is what actually creates the business cycle, this boom bust cycle that we um, yeah. that we complain about all the time, and that we that well, they use as an excuse to have the Federal Reserve in the first place. Yeah. Is to try and control the the business cycle. Yeah. But what they're doing is they're creating this this up and down um, business cycle, yeah. and every time it goes, every time it goes down and they inflate it again, it goes up and it becomes a bigger bust the next time. Yep, and we're due <laughs> for a big one here. Unfortunately, yeah. oh yeah, the next one is gonna be yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Um, I mean, they got a little bit of a reprieve during the COVID thing and they could, they could write it off as the COVID thing, but all they really did, I mean, think about this, the, you got a little bit of a recession because of, because of COVID, because yeah. of the reaction to COVID, yeah. um, and, uh, the shutting of businesses and so forth. And, um, so you got a little bit of a recession that they could blame on COVID, but yeah. all what they did during that entire time is just create a whole bunch more money oh yeah yeah so now they've created a, an even greater inflationary bubble yeah um for the long term whenever it comes back around and it will it, oh, it will, will eventually come back around. oh yeah and on top of that they've left the interest rates at basically zero yeah this whole time which is the like there's nothing they can do when the next one hits well the and that's a problem in and of itself too yeah. um because what the interest rate should represent is the cost of money yeah um in the sense that like now i'm a big believer in credit i mean i think yeah. that credit should be available to people yeah um but I don't believe that the government should be controlling the interest rates. This is another way the banks can kind of compete with each other. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's reasons that they charge some people higher rates than others. Oh, yeah. Um, there's good reasons for that. Yeah. Uh, the safer well, the investment. Risk, yeah. yeah. The safer the investment, the lower the rate that they can trust that person will pay. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, like the higher the risk, the more money you want to get up front. Yeah. Like the quicker you want to recollect the, the, the principal. Debt. Yeah. 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 Um, and so... But anyway, like keeping the interest rates low, it creates this opportunity for people to make bad investments over and over again because yeah. there's so much lower risk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I, w I should have cut this clip, too. Um, uh, it's not Fifi Lagarde anymore. Um, oh, uh, whoever's over the central bank in Europe uh, right. said something about how... Um, you know, the negative interest rates, like people were upset about negative interest rates, like having to pay the bank to keep their money yeah. um, and, and so forth. And and she made some comment about this is how, you know, this is how we fund all this, essentially. Like it was really, <laughs> it was really absurd. And yeah. and it just like, yeah, exactly. This yeah. is exactly it. Was, it was a moment of honesty. <laughs> so, but there's so many reasons to be opposed to this. Like yeah. there's no way that we could have maintained 20 years of war. Oh, no. Uh, without the Federal Reserve controlling the money supply. Yeah, no way. No way. Because we would have we would have run out of money by then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we ran out of money a long time ago. Well, that's true. I mean, but the same thing. Like, this is something that has kept a cap on wars for uh, most of human history. Yeah. Um, is the fact that you can only, you can only spend so much money. Yeah. Like, you can only spend what you have, and yeah. you can only... You have only what you can take from the people, and the people will only take so much of that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and you're also dependent on them to be your soldiers too. So, like, yeah. you know, Once there's two again, ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people don't be soldiers if they don't get paid for it. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> uh, not generally. Um, if there's a good cause, you don't need to recruit really. Um, yeah. But the point is that uh, that this is one of the ways, like the expansion of credit, um, debasing of currency. These are these are methods that governments use to um, extend the money supply beyond what it should. Yeah. And we're, we see it right now. We're th almost $30 trillion in debt at this point. Yeah. 
and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, I mean, and your dollar is worth a whole lot less. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> a whole lot. Which is the only way. I, I don't that know. they can get rid of that debt. That, yeah, I was fixed to say, yeah, that's the yeah. only way they can get rid of that debt yeah. is to inflate it away. Mm -hmm. And here's the other part of that. Like you've been you've been told your whole life that, well, you need to have a, um, some level of inflation <laughs> because deflation is bad. Yeah. Now, in a real free market, inflation, deflation, they're oppositional forces. They find, um, a, a, you know, a median. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and where they're relatively stable, they're like small fluctuations up and down, but they're, they're relatively stable. But the truth is deflation isn't so bad. Yeah. Deflation is actually really good for you and me because yeah. that means that our dollar buys more. Yeah. Well, um, it's the deflation's not really good for big business Yeah. because then what they put into production, uh, is ends up being, um, more than what they're, what they calculated essentially when they're setting prices and so forth. Yeah. I mean, it would seem like deflation would be good for the people because I mean, it's basically just free money at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, just like buying crypto when yeah. the crypto market was just going crazy. You bought it at one price mm -hmm. and then a month later it was a higher price. Yeah. And you know, that's, I mean, why would that be bad for your, for your dollar? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, and that's my long-term goal with buying gold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that it'll continue to be worth more and more and more. Yeah. It's the same thing with buying property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they ain't you know, making no more dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of are, but yeah. You know. And I, how many, how many tons of, uh, um, space material falls on the earth every year? I don't remember. But uh, it's, I don't it's know a lot. But it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's substantial. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm waiting for that gold meteor to land in my yard. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, uh, but there you go. I mean, this is a, again, another way of, um, partially of controlling your habits. Um, uh, and it creates perverse incentives. Uh, it creates a disincentive to save. Um, and then of course they tell you that's bad anyway. Well, you're, you're just taking that money out of circulation. We need the money to circulate for a good economy. Well, no, that's not true. It's not what um, you need. Yeah. yeah capital what? investment is what's needed for a good economy. Yeah. You got to be able to invest and expand. Yeah. Well, you have to have savings to invest and expand. Yeah. Like savings are a good thing in the long run. Yeah. And I, I've all, that's always irritated me because I've, I've always been like, well, why would it be bad if we had a country full of people who weren't in debt? Like, yeah. how is that like a bad thing? Like, I get that you mm -hmm. want the money to circulate around, but the mm -hmm. economy will work if you just leave it alone to do it. Mm -hmm. And if we had a bunch of people that didn't have debt in the process, I think that would be a net good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I that would be more people have savings and are successful. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, because debt's never like, I mean, you don't want to be in debt. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but and then you, you think about it from the perspective of a government. Yeah. And you say, well, this provides a way of controlling people, too. Oh, it does. Debt oh. provides a way of controlling people. It's true. No, it's absolutely true. Um, and so it, it's, you know, it's good uh, in government schools for them to teach you that inflation is good and deflation is bad and that you need to uh, spend money to, to keep the economy running and, <laughs> you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, of course, you know, create a debt cycle for college. Um, by encouraging people to go to college, driving the prices up with free money to the colleges um, right. that you give away to the students that now are in debt to the government. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, and that's the only debt that they don't, you know, take away that yeah. you can't yeah. you bankrupt can't get rid yourself of that. out yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, now they're saying, well, we're just going to drop all the student debt. But that that creates its own problems, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a whole bunch of lost money. Yep. So. Um, <laughs> no. Even though it'd be going to the government, I don't know. Yeah, yeah like the government needs. The <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, but it, you know, again, it's it's money that I mean, it's never used well. Yeah. But it's just going to create a higher, a uh, higher deficit and a higher debt. Yeah. I mean, that the deficit's just the biggest joke now. Like, I don't even why you even bother keeping up with it. It's so <laughs> large. It's never going away. Like, it's just there now. Yeah. <laughs> and just something to think about. This may be why we're being so antagonistic with China. China yeah. owns a lot of U.S. debt. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. You know, one way to wipe away that debt to China is to have a war with them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not paying you back. We're going to just default on that debt, and we're in fight. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I talk about the end of the world scenarios. Yeah, I know. Like, 
That, we can, we that, can talk about atomic bombs again that, if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we've had that conversation on here, yeah. but I mean, like that is a truly scary thought. Yeah. You know. Well, and the the real scary thought is that the these people at the top they have no scruples. Yeah. I mean, like this doesn't bother bother them a bit. You think about like Woodrow Wilson. Um, and, you know, talk about the many lies that brought us into war. Uh, in the past, like USS Maine, Gulf of Tonkin, etc. But the main reason that we entered World War I um, was because there were a bunch of, uh, of U.S. financiers that, had, um, that were owed, that were creditors to allied nations. Yeah. And the allied nations weren't going to be able to pay it back. Yeah. And that's the main reason that we entered the, the World War I. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that is... Uh, it, in. Yeah. And from my perspective, yeah. that's the main reason that we entered World War One is to try and ensure that those people had their debts paid. Yeah. <laughs> and in the end, it was probably paid out of tax money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's also the beginning of the permanent income tax. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Good old Wilson. I despise him. Yeah. Um, he's like the worst person ever, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> probably ever. I, he might be worse than Hitler. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Might be worse than Hitler. He was on the other side, but he. You know, that doesn't make him a that better person. That doesn't make him the better get man, yeah. <laughs> uh, a, lot, um, a lot of stuff happened in that time period still with us today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Wilson's the root of all evil in this country. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we, we can do a whole podcast we'll have to do on a podcast. Wilson sometime. That, that, like that might that have guy. to be a podcast we do in the yeah. some point, yeah. Um, I mean, that's all I really have about that. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, be aware that the, the root of the economic problems in this country is not big greedy big business um it is the government um interference in the market yeah um and government control of the market in a lot of ways and the big banks they love this stuff oh, they're yeah. all aboard on the federal reserve and the central banks um they're all aboard certainly on the um the payouts yeah. um like all of this is good they're all on board with the low interest rates yeah um because those really what they dictate is the interest rates between each other yeah. Not to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and, uh, yeah. That's it. You got anything else? No, I don't really have anything else, man. So. It's all a big lie. <laughs> all right. Trust no one. <laughs> all governments lie. Yeah. That's the thing that just gets to me about all of this. When, when I have these arguments and, like, you start talking about specific people um, with with those that that believe in the state yeah. and you start talking about specific people and they agree that those people are despicable, that they're terrible, that they're liars, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like how is it that, that it's so easily forgotten the last lie when they tell the next lie, yeah. just because they're a government bureaucrat that yeah. they're, you know, that they're an elected representative. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's another part of attention deficit democracy actually is to swing it back around to that, to that book is, uh, you know, he's uh, like, we've made the mostly the Spooner argument about government of consent. But, yeah. um, but the argument in this book is that how can you consent based on lies? Yeah. Like if you, if the public agrees that we should go into Iraq, but we agreed that we should go into Iraq because of a lie about weapons of mass destruction. Can yeah. you really call that public consent? <laughs> All right. No, it's true. Cause you were lied into it. You know? Yeah. If, if the consent is based on, false information provided by the party that's seeking your consent. Like yeah. anywhere else we would call that fraud. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's absolutely fraud. Yeah. You know? So, um, all right. Well, I guess that's all, that's all I got then. All right. We're actually finishing a little early tonight. Oh, that's good. Well, it's getting we go. warm in here. <laughs> yeah. No joke. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we're still yeah. next week. No softball. Uh, yeah, but I'm out of town next week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Forgot about that. All right. Actually forgot about that till today again. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm leaving Tuesday. Won't be back till Saturday probably. Friday, All right. Friday or Saturday. I don't know. We might could try to squeeze one in Friday. I'll have to see. Mm-hmm. Well, not if you're not coming back till Saturday. But I'm not. Yeah, that's why I said I'll have to see. <laughs> okay. So, well, maybe I'll just do a short one by myself. Um, maybe I'll I'll come up with something good to talk about for 20 or 30 minutes and... Yeah. And do that. So, well, something next week, but... Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. 
probably something next week. We'll try and get something out to you next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, eventually, one way or the other, yeah. Um, we uh, yeah, we'll we'll be here. And um, in the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Like and share. Um, provide comments, etc. I I don't know what what else yeah. do I ask for anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know the all do all the things that are good for <laughs> circulating this information. Yep. Yeah. Do that. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back in a week or two yeah. um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.